Number 10, we have graveyards. Graveyards are common things, but what isn't common is a desert graveyard for sea mammals. I'm not even sure how that makes sense, so let me explain. Another mystery of the desert came about when a surprising burial site was found in the sands. In the Atacama Desert in Chile, there's a hill Cerro Bolina, which also means whale hill. It's 40 meters above sea level and during some road work in 2010 was found to contain fossils of 40 whales along with a collection of other marine mammals, dolphins, seals and other kinds of swordfish. What a day at work that would be. Initially it seemed like an amazing case of fossilization, but it just didn't add up. How could dozens of animals of various species have died all at once, and more importantly had been preserved? The biggest explanation is that the numerous mammals and fish were deposited over time. The hill happened to be a place where the bodies were washed up and nature preserved them for 6 to 19 million years. True or not, it definitely isn't something one wants to stumble upon while hiking through the hills. Coming in at number 9, we have an alien skeleton. Get a load of this freaky find. What is it? An alien looking skeleton was found buried in a leather pouch in the Atacama Desert in Chile in 2003. Oh, and not just any part of the Atacama Desert, it was in an abandoned town behind a church, just to make things creepier. This strange looking skeleton was just 6 inches in length, so I don't know, about like this big? Tiny alien, tiny little alien. Also, the carcass had just 10 ribs, where humans have 12, so this coupled with the weird look of the remains, it led people to believe that the Chilean discovery was legit an alien. Have a closer look. Like, I'm no conspiracist, but I have to say that this is weird. Too weird. However, in 2012, after an intense study on the remains, medics found that the skeleton was that of a female baby girl suffering with a number of gene mutations. It is likely that the girl had dwarfism or something of the like. Coming in at number 8, we have fairy circles. That might make you think of something cute and whimsical. Well, it's quite the opposite of that. It's actually more about a lack of life than anything charming. In the Namib Desert and in Australia, there are odd circles in the middle of the desert that are evenly spaced out and exactly Concentric. It looks like something a conspiracy theorist would claim there was evidence that a UFO landed there. More reasonable theories such as fire or winds being the reason were ruled out by the fact that these bare patches could last decades, some remaining free of plant life for as long as 75 years. It wasn't until 2017 that any type of viable explanations was put forward. The leading explanation was termite colonies and that plant root systems do this as a means of distributing water. Neither of these fully explain why the circles remain barren for so long with no visible trace of colonies, but I guess this makes more sense than the circles being made by literal fairies. Either way, I'm not sure how I feel about this one being unexplained. It just seems a little too creepy. Getting very intense at number 7, we have war jets. 2003 was a tense time in Iraq. The United States and friends had just joined forces to launch Bush's war on terror. Now this included the Iraq war. The justification for the shock and awe bombing campaign was that the Iraqi government were hiding weapons of mass destruction. While the weapons were never found, if there were any, a fleet of hidden warplanes were found in the desert west of Baghdad. The Iraqi air force stayed out of it when the country was being attacked, presumably because they thought that they were no match for the US military, and they were probably right. Instead of having a lot of their planes destroyed, they buried them. Now, some 30 odd Cold War era inceptors and brand new attack jets were found when a small part of a plane was seen poking out of the sand. Can you imagine unearthing them? How terrifying. The findings made some people even more convinced that the country were hiding weapons after all, but the US have never found them. If they are ever dug up from the sand, well, that would be the scariest desert find of them all time may well tell. Number 6 brings us to a more disturbing one. One Desert brings us the emptied body of Ryle Singleton. Not just the body, the emptied body. I'm not sure how my stomach will handle this one. In 2013, a 24 year old male model from Georgia was found dead by hikers in California's Mojave Desert, two and a half months after he disappeared. His eyes, lungs, liver, kidneys and heart had been removed. When I say empty, I mean empty. No evidence of a perpetrator was ever found or even any leads as of 2016. Police felt that the removed organs did not indicate he had been murdered by an organ obsessed killer. They thought the missing organs could be blamed on scavenging animals, but it just is too odd in this case because the body was still intact. It's almost like the organs were removed professionally. Whether it was a homicide or a natural cause of death, no reason was ever found for why he died or where he did. The investigation is still going. Oh my god, Jocelyn, that is horrendous. I don't like the sound of that. 
at all, I am officially freaked out. On a bit of a lighter note, at number five, we have ancient weed. Whoa. So we knew that the Gobi Desert in northwest China was blazing hot, but the whole place got blazier. In 2008, basically, a huge stash of ancient marijuana was found buried in a tomb. Busting the oldest weed stash, archaeologists found two pounds of cannabis plants that were thought to have been preserved underground for 2.7 millennia. The stash was buried next to the body of a 35 year old Caucasian man who likely used the drug for its medicinal benefits. The question on everyone's lips is can you still get high? from it. Well, it seems that the plant still did have its resinous hairs intact. These are the thing that contain the psychoactive compounds, so probably you could get high from it. Although who knows, it's so old, who knows what that high would be like, honestly. I bet that some people would love to venture on that trip, but for me, I think I'd really rather not. Taking the number four spot is dinosaur tracks. I know what you're thinking, you probably don't believe me and you probably think I'm a little bit crazy. And some of my friends might agree with you, but I'm telling you that I'm not. In a desert in Utah, a hiker discovered a collection of footprints left behind 125 million years ago by a number of different dinosaurs. In 2014, volunteers spent hours sweeping, scraping, and brushing the tracks. This isn't just a small rock with some prints on it. Over 200 tracks were uncovered, and in one case there was 17 consecutive prints from the same animal. Paleontologist Rebecca Hunt Foster said, it helps fill in these gaps about these animals that we don't know much about. We know they were here, we just don't find their bones. What you can see in the images of these tracks is a crocodile dragging its tail while apparently leaving a slash in the hardened mud. You can also see that a three-toed meat eater walked there too. Some could see this as a really cool thing, some could see it as a little bit scary. Finding tracks of dinosaurs just reminds me that they were in fact real and that they once walked this earth too. Who knows what else is out there? I feel like three-toed meat eater is an excellent band name, so if anyone's watching and you need a band name, have it on us. Coming in at number three, we have The Claw. Paranormal researchers found what looked like a giant alien claw in the Peruvian desert in January 2017. The claw was found in a cave near the ancient city of Cusco, and it is so big that if it belonged to a human, they would have to be nine foot tall. Now, skeptics are calling it a fake, which to be fair, given the source and the lack of DNA evidence to back it up, I'm thinking actually, maybe that isn't a bad shout. Still though, I just really like saying the claw. The claw! Alright guys, here we are at spot number two with the lost student film set. I know I was a little confused at first too. In 1923, dunes near the Santa Barbara served as the site of a legendary student film called The Ten Commandments. 90 years later, the remains of the massive movie set are being excavated. Roughly 1,500 workmen spent six weeks building the huge Egyptian city set. It included a 35 foot tall statue, a 110 foot gate, and 21 sphinx, each weighing five tons. Why was it that after production was over, did the director not truck the set back to LA or simply leave it? standing. Peter Bronson is a filmmaker who is on the hunt to figure it out. He says, I think there were two things going on here. Hauling away all that statuary would have been very expensive, so I think he pulled a fast one and buried it. Also, if he left it standing, the very next day, someone would be there filming a quick one on his set and they would be on the streets with it within a few weeks. An interesting theory for sure, Bronson has been seeking the vanished set since 1982. Some objects have already been excavated and are already on display, while the rest is still buried. It'd be interesting to see what else was left behind. I can't believe that. They spend so much on a set and then they just like bury it, no one else can use it. That makes me feel not okay about film. All right, finally coming in at number one of our scariest things found in the desert, we have a shipwreck. A shipwreck, wait, what? A shipwreck in the desert. What, where, how, why? Questions. Well guys, I introduced to you Namibia's Skeleton Coast. Now the Skeleton Coast is very inhospitable. It's something a bit like the end of the earth. The desert land beside the ocean is home to an estimated 500 shipwrecks with rumors that the land is cursed. It seems that the Bushmen of Namibia refer to the area as the land God made in anger, whereas the Portuguese used to call it the gates of hell. Either way, sounds lovely. Basically, if your ship was run aground in this area, you would likely die. Drinking this seawater will send you mad and there is almost no precipitation in the desert by the water. In 2016, the wreck of a 500 year old ship was found in the desert with over 10 million dollars worth of gold coins on board. The wreckage of the bomb Jesus set sail from Lisbon in 1533 and was headed for India when it became beached in the Namibian hellhole. It wasn't just the gold of interest to archaeologists either, 
there were skeletal remains of the crew found. To me, a shipwreck in the desert is so crazy I can't get my head around it and it's really, really, really scary. First up, in our 10th spot today, we have screaming mummies. Okay, when you think of a classic mummy, what do you see? I'm going to assume you just replied, I see the mummy's face and it looks like it's screaming as its mouth is, you know, wide open. For a very long time, it was believed that mummies found with their mouth open were possibly people that were tortured to death, especially those found with their hands bounded together. But in most recent years, scientists have learned how silly that theory might be because most mummies are actually found with that permanent screaming expression. During the mummification process, if the jaw isn't strapped shut, then the jaw naturally falls open when it begins to decay. But then again, we're also sure that some of the mummies were most likely buried alive, but it is possible that it could be too hard at this point to fully know. In our number nine spot today is the mass grave of the headless Vikings. Ah. It was a sunny day. Just another casual digging expedition for these archaeologists, digging up the side of an old roadway in Dorset, UK. But suddenly, they dug up something extraordinary. It was a grave site for 54 Vikings, and they were all headless. The leg and arm bones and heads and torsos were all together neatly in separate piles. The archaeologists didn't know what to make of this, so their theory was that these people were captured by the locals and they were murdered and dismembered by the villagers who took some of their heads for souvenirs. Well that's terrifying. Later on they revamped that theory and they believed that perhaps that this was some kind of ritualistic sacrifice performed at this time. Yeah, perhaps scientists didn't want us to know this because, well, that is terrifying. Coming up in today's eighth spot, we have something that I personally think is highly unsettling, and I would like to inquire as to why wasn't this on the news stations everywhere around the world when it was discovered? Because this one is kind of hard to believe that it is real. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's just a cat that was carved into the hills of Peru. Yep, a cat. Come on, a cat? <laughs> That's so creepy. I mean, I'm a dog person myself, so perhaps I'm a little biased, but I mean, cultures have been known to worship and honor the cat throughout centuries, including the Egyptians and, well, North Americans nowadays. They have, you know, a lot of crazy cat ladies, but who knows? Maybe there's a higher reason that cats were continuously worshipped and perhaps we should honor them. This cat geoglyph was found in the Nazca Desert and it is said to be the oldest one in its region, dating to 200 BC to 100 BC. The cat is apparently 120 feet. Wow, how isn't this more known? I'm mind blown. All the crazy cat Karens are saying, um, excuse me, I knew this. Coming up in our seventh spot today, we have the Tomb of Sunken Skulls. Found in the bottom of a prehistoric dry lake bed in Motala, Sweden, archaeologists stumbled upon a mysterious stone structure. After some digging, they were able to eventually unearth animal bones, stone tools, and 8,000 year old skulls of 10 people aging from young to old. Sometimes it's hard for me to fathom that it is possible for archaeologists to know that something is really that old. Like how is this possible that we are able to know this and yet we haven't made a time machine yet? But also, if you really sit and think about how far we've come in the last 100 years, it really makes you think, holy, I wish I could travel in time to see how people actually lived them. Because even with our discoveries to paint a picture, it's still quite hard to imagine. They also found fragments of one skull deliberately put into the skull of another. What purpose was this for? The archaeologists concluded that actually 11 people were butchered in a stone hut with no other discovery as to why. But one last final horrific detail. Some of the skulls had stakes embedded into them, and it was concluded that they were perhaps mounted for some funeral purpose or as a sort of trophy after the defeat of its opponents. In our sixth spot today, we have a discovery that honestly, I wish I didn't know about. For all the mothers out there that are feeling a little sensitive, definitely, you know, close your ears to this one. While on an expedition deep in the underground sewer in Ashkelon, Israel, expecting to only find dirt and, well, poop. <laughs> Archaeologists discovered thousands of tiny bones. After further inspection, they discovered that the bones were of newborn babies. Maybe around a hundred of newborn babies. 
just horrible. It wasn't completely uncommon though for ancient times to dispose of newborns, particularly girls who were considered not as valuable to the family as boys. But it is interesting though that there were actually quite a few boys that were found. It was and still is so curious that those bones were disposed of in a sewer. If I could guess, I think this sounds like the case of some religious sacrifice. But who knows? In our fifth spot today, we have the Mammoth Graveyard. An expedition in Russia led to a discovery of what looks like a graveyard of mammoth bones from 25,000 years ago. The site has been under excavation since 2014, and it is said that it measures 40 feet across. Whoa. At this point, archaeologists still don't know how it was built, and also why. <laughs> what was the purpose of this? I suspect aliens, you know, aliens came down to Earth and had a sacrificial mammoth ceremony and then gathered all of the bones in one area and left them for us humans to eventually clean up. That sounds possible. In our fourth spot today, we have severed hands. While on an Egyptian expedition, a group of archaeologists whom were digging near the ancient city of Averis discovered a few chopped off hands. The hands were found in what was once a throne room, and therefore there was an immediate understanding that this was some kind of gesture for the king. The team ended up discovering 14 hands, and the even more interesting part, it was all right hands. The hands are about 3,600 years old. Eventually, it was discovered that they were buried when King Kyan ruled over the city. Only through reviewing ancient writing were they able to put the pieces together and see that during this time, the soldiers would present a severed right hand of his enemy to the king in exchange for gold. It was said to be a symbolic gesture, showing that they are depriving their enemy of power as they will no longer have their hand. Fascinating. It's crazy to believe that we humans once were in a headspace where we were chopping off hands so as to take other humans humans power away from them. Ah, <laughs> fascinating. In our third spot today, we have the good old Neanderthals. Archaeologists have discovered that some 40,000 years ago, Belgians, also known as Neanderthals, were practicing cannibalism. They used to make a meal out of their friends and create tools out of their bones. At least they weren't wasteful. This discovery was made in a cave where Neanderthal bones were discovered along with marks of butchery. There were also bones of horses and other animals in the cave, but they seemed to be stripped apart just like the human bones were, leading the archaeologists to conclude that these Neanderthals seem to make no distinction between man and animal, which poses the question, at what point did we start making this distinction? And are there still people who don't? Google the conspiracies around this at your own risk. In our second spot today, we have the claw. In 1986, while on an expedition on Mount Owen in New Zealand, a giant claw was found. Deep within a cave in the mountain, the archaeologists discovered this massive beast-like claw. It was eventually discovered that it was the 3,000-year-old remains of an upland moa, a flightless bird that went extinct, which you would think to be impossible as well. It kind of reminds me of how all the Kardashian-like girls wear their nails these days? I mean, how do they function with those nails? I can barely type and I barely have nails. <laughs> ah, Melissa. <laughs> in our number one spot today, we have the chemical warfare. On an expedition in 1933, archaeologist Robert de Misnil du Boisson discovered 19 Roman soldiers in a tunnel. Apparently, they all look like they died trying to flee from something. I can't imagine what during those times. Traces of sulfur and bitumen were actually found along the walls until it was eventually discovered that all signs point to this being one of the first attempts at chemical warfare. Whoa. And honestly, hopefully one of the last. That's all I'm saying. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have liquid mercury. This discovery came not necessarily from within a temple, but rather under it, but I still think it counts because they really are all connected. In 2003, after 1,800 years, a researcher named Sergio Gomez unsealed and began excavating a tunnel which laid beneath a Mexican pyramid. In 2014, the team searching this tunnel announced that they had found three chambers at the end of the 300 foot tunnel, which lays 60 feet below the pyramid of the feathered serpent, which is the temple I previously mentioned. So, this under temple tunnel is already cool enough, but what makes this discovery even more fascinating is how they also found large quantities of liquid mercury in one of the chambers at the end of this tunnel. This first meant that the team of researchers needed to wear some extra protective gear because mercury can be poisonous, but also this meant to them that they may be very close to discovering the very first royal 
tomb ever located in Teotihuacan after decades of searching. The mercury may symbolize an underworld river or lake, not that different from the river Styx. I honestly don't know what could be cooler than a huge secret tunnel found under an ancient temple that leads to a pool of poisonous liquid metal. In our ninth spot, we have the tigers. The Wat Pha Luang Tabwa Temple in Thailand is also called the Tiger Temple. Why? Well, it's home to tigers. In fact, the monks there actually lived with them, and visitors were allowed to feed them and pet them. But sadly, in 2016, officials were getting reports about tourists being attacked by the tigers while being there. Later, it was found the tigers were being drugged, and that's why sometimes they wouldn't attack. But when the wore off, meow, you know, bad kitty. Later on, a raid found 137 tigers and 40 dead cubs, which is very sad and heartbreaking. The sanctuary was later forced to close and the healthy tigers were relocated. In our number 8 spot today, we have too many wooden coffins. In Egypt, archaeologists uncovered a funerary temple with some of the oldest coffins ever found in Zakara. This project, led by Egyptologist Zahi Hawass, found the funerary temple of Queen Nirit, who is the wife of King Teti, the first pharaoh of the 6th dynasty of Egypt. This mission ended up finding 52 burial shafts with more than 50 wooden coffins found inside that date back to around 3,000 years ago. Discoveries like this are of course incredible, but I'm not gonna lie, there's also something extremely eerie about all of these people who have been gone for thousands of years now being dug up and moved around. Along with the coffins, there were plenty of artifacts and small statues found, mostly relating to different deities of the time. The coffins themselves also usually had representations of the deities on them, as well as various excerpts from the Book of the Dead, so as to help the lost souls pass through on their journey to the other world. In our seventh spot, we have the lost civilization. This one guy literally found an entire lost civilization while excavating a temple. So in 2003, archaeologist Sergio Gomez was working on the temple of the plumed serpent. He arrived to work one day to find a massive sinkhole at the foot of the pyramid. The night before, a heavy rainstorm hit the area. But after looking in the hole, he was like, dude, there's something down there. So he attached himself to a rope and lowered himself down into the hole. And he was right, something was down there. After further investigation, he found the lost civilization of Teotihuacan. Imagine that, it just makes me think, what other lost cities are there below us that we haven't even found yet? It's incredible. In our number six spot today, we have ancient gold. While renovating a temple in the southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu, a group of villagers who had taken the renovations upon themselves were shocked to find a bunch of ancient gold. This gold was hidden under the stairs that lead to the temple's underground sanctorium. There were a bunch of different gold items, such as a gold chain, and they all weighed around an estimated 565 grams. The people who found this gold thought that it was a promising sign, and they wanted to keep the gold in the temple after the renovations were completed. India's Treasure Trove Act states that the finder of treasure must report the value, date, time, and location to the district collector, so that is of course what these people had to do. In doing so, authorities came to seize the found gold to the dismay of those who had found it. Unfortunately, after attempts to negotiate, the gold did end up being seized. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the curse. Turns out that a number of temples are haunted and cursed. I could do a whole top 10 list on that topic alone, if we haven't already. But today, let's talk about one of the most cursed temples in the world. That is the Padmapashwani Temple, and we're talking about Walbi that's located in there. This is a Hindu temple located in India. It was built in the 16th century and contains six vaults, five of which have already been opened, and it contained up to one trillion dollars worth of treasures. But no one wants to open the last vault, referred to as Vault B. Why? Well, legend goes that it's cursed. Locals tell of a story of a man that tried to enter this vault, but failed after a cobra came out of nowhere and killed him. While another legend says that the vault is connected to the Arabian Sea, they open it, it will flood the entire state. Not only that, but a man named T.P. Sindarajan, an Indian lawyer, made a petition to get Vault B open. However, in 2011, he unexpectedly and mysteriously passed away. People think that he was the victim of the temple's curse. But what do you think? In our number four spot today, we have human teeth. 
In 2014, some people were restoring a wooden statue of Jesus called the Lord of Patience that was located in the parish of San Batalo, Cuatlapan, Mexico. The statue depicted Jesus as he was awaiting crucifixion, and it had been located within the church for 300 years. During these restorations, however, it was discovered that this statue, more particularly the mouth of this statue, contained real human teeth. Old statues in this region of Mexico are usually found with things like rabbit teeth or dog teeth in a statue of the devil, and sometimes with real human hair, but there's just something about the teeth that really freak me out. And also, how did no one else know for 300 years? We don't know exactly where the teeth came from, but it is likely that they were taken from someone, living or dead, who wanted to donate them for this exact reason. Or maybe they were taken from someone who didn't want to donate them. That is also, unfortunately, a possibility. Coming in at number three, we have the Flayed Lord Temple. In 2019, archaeologists were exploring a temple in Mexico when they came across something quite dark and strange. The temple was used by Aztecs and they would engage in sacrifices for the gods. In particular, they would skin themselves. So when the archaeologists excavated the temple, they came across three statues, each with skin skulls and a torso wearing someone else's skin, as well as they found garbage holes where the victim's skin was discarded after they were done with it. There goes my appetite. In our number two spot today, we have a human skeleton inside a statue. Have you ever heard of the practice of self-mummification? Well, it exists, and it is most often practiced by monks. This is what led to a real skeleton being found inside of a Buddha statue located in a temple in the 1990s. The process of self-mummification isn't an easy task. It starts off at least three years before death, with the first step being to eat a diet that consists only of nuts, roots, berries, and bark. Somewhere around a thousand to 3,000 days later, they will stop eating and only drink water that has been mixed with salt and basically just meditate until they have passed. They are buried while just on the brink of death and then will have their remains exhumed later in order to see if the mummification process was a success. That is the process that the monk found inside of the statue took. After his death, his mummified remains were placed inside of the temple for two more centuries. After his body began to deteriorate, some monks decided it might be best to encase it in a statue, and thus this weird discovery in the 1990s was born. It's a little less weird when we understand why this all took place, but definitely still weird nonetheless. And in our number one spot today, we have the mermaid bones. Yeah, you heard me correctly, mermaid bones. So located at the Ryoguji Temple in Japan, on display is what they claim to be six bones belonging to a mermaid. According to the history of the bones, the mermaid was found on the shore of Hakata Bay in 1222. A shaman said that the creature was a mermaid and it washing up on shore was a sign of good luck. Eventually, the bones were given to the temple, which changed its name to Ryugujo, which means Undersea Palace of the Dragon God. In fact, if you go there, visitors can even bathe in the water that the bones were once soaked in. This is said to keep them safe and prevent them from getting sick. Kinda interesting, like I wanna see these mermaid bones for myself. Also, do you guys believe in mermaids? Let me know in the comments below. Starting off this countdown, we have the Sinners. During construction near Oxford United Football Stadium, workers discovered a very creepy burial ground. The burial site had around 100 skeletons and it's thought that they were 600 to 900 years old. The bones included someone with leprosy, someone who suffered a blunt force trauma, and a woman buried face down. What came of most interest to researchers was this woman. Typically, women were buried face down if they were an accused witch, or if they were a sinner. Researchers believe that this woman was actually a nun who was accused of getting it on with the priests. It was thought that if you bury any sinners face down, then this prevents the impure soul from threatening the living. Hence, why she was buried face down. Moving on to number nine, we have the vampires. During the construction of a roadway near Gliwice in Poland, they came across what they thought were the remains of World War II soldiers. However, upon investigating, it was discovered that the remains belonged to vampires. Well, people who were accused of being vampires. They found that their heads had been chopped off and then placed on their legs. This was done to ensure that the dead stayed dead. 
Others were found with punctured spines or their heads wedged between heavy stones. Again, this was all preventative measures done to ensure that the vampires don't rise out of their graves. But these vampires were mainly people who suffered from diseases or deformities, which caused them to behave strangely. And strange or unusual behavior meant that you were evil. In our 8th spot, we have the Neanderthal family. Archaeologists in Spain discovered the remains of a family of 12 Neanderthals. But sadly, this family succumbed to a tragic fate around 49,000 years ago. The bodies were found with marks all over their bodies, leading researchers to believe that they were killed by a cannibalistic Neanderthal family. Yep, they were eaten alive by another family. So the bodies had thin slashes on their bones from tools, thought to be from the cannibals hitting the bones to break them and then they would feast on the bone marrow. Then evidence suggests that when they were finished, they used the victim's bones to sharpen the edge of their own tools. In our seventh spot, we have the Screaming Mummies. The first Screaming Mummy was found in 1886 by Dier El Bari. We call it the Screaming Mummy because the mummy was found with its mouth hanging wide open, looking like it was screaming. Then over the years, more and more Screaming Mummies were discovered. And this became a huge mystery. Were they buried alive or tortured? Why did they look like that? Researchers had no idea for the longest time. Now, the mummy that Dier was analyzing, he assumed that he had just been poisoned and his mouth was open because when the poison was slowly kicking into effect, he knew what was happening and was shocked. But new evidence suggests that he was actually hung. But turns out that most of these mummies look like they're screaming because they were poorly wrapped. Yep, it's as simple as that. The jaw wasn't wrapped tight enough, so the mouth ended up naturally falling open. Nonetheless, they look a thousand times creepier than other mummies. Making our way down the list, number six, we have the bog bodies. Over 15 years ago, a group of archaeologists were exploring an area in Scotland when they came across some very creepy bodies. The bodies were of one female and one male who died about 3,000 years ago. But because of the state that they were in, it was believed that their bodies were thrown into a bog where they mummified for about 300 to 600 years. After that, they were taken out and buried. But something was off about these bodies. The woman's jaw was too large for her skull, and the man's limbs were off. Well. Turns out that these bodies were the combination of six different people fused together, like some sort of Frankenstein monster. The female was combined with body parts from several other people who died around the same time as her, whereas the male had body parts from people who died hundreds of years before him. And the bones weren't just pushed together, no, they were actually attached properly. So why would someone do this? And who did this? It's so creepy. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the sacrifices. Now, it's not new news that the Aztecs were a big fan of bloody sacrifices, but it's still quite shocking to come across sacrificial burial spots because this next find revealed just how gruesome these rituals can get. So in 2004, a team discovered a number of decapitated and mutilated bodies outside of Mexico City. The bodies belonged to humans and animals. These rituals were performed as a way to feed the gods. It was believed that if you let the gods go hungry, then the sun would stop rising and the world would come to its end. In this burial spot, they found several skulls stuck together on a post and others with holes in their head that were once used for decoration. I mean, it may not look so bad now, but imagine back in the day when the skulls still had the victim's skin and eyes and hair on it. Eey. In our fourth spot, we have the sunken skulls. In 2009, while excavating a dry lake bed in Motala, Sweden, a bunch of strange artifacts were found. There was a pile of animal bones, stone tools, and a bunch of skulls with stakes plunged through their heads. These skulls are 8,000 years old, and experts have no clue what happened to them. In fact, there's even one skull that has pieces 
of other skulls shoved up inside of it. Yeah, pretty disgusting. They think that this was either part of their funeral practices, or it was created as some sort of trophy by warriors who defeated their opponents. Moving on to number 3, we have the Shackled Skeletons. In 2016, a group of 80 skeletons were found buried in Athens, Greece. But these skeletons were found chained up with iron shackles still around their wrists. They are believed to be prisoners who died around 650 BC and 625 BC. These skeletons were found with terrified expressions plastered on their faces. Their necks were flexed and their jaws hung wide open. Studies showed that all the skeletons were males who suffered horrific deaths. They were chained up while an executioner went down the line, killing these men one by one while the others watched, waiting their turn. They were ruthless back in the day. I just want to know what these men did. In our second spot, we have the expedition bones. Back in 1845, Sir John Franklin led two ships filled with 129 men to explore the Canadian Arctic in search of the Northwest Passage. However, along the way, the ships ended up getting stuck in ice and they all faced a chilling death. But thanks to the ice, the bodies of the crewmen were preserved. In the 1980s and the 1990s, researchers recovered the remains of the crew on King William Island, and they found some pretty terrifying things. It was thought that the crew resorted to cannibalism for the last couple of days. They had food aboard the ship, but many were sick from scurvy, tuberculosis, hypothermia, and pneumonia, which made them disoriented and a little wild. The crew were found with cut marks all over their body, indicating that their flesh was cut off the bones and eaten. On other men, their bones had been cracked open and the bone marrow was feasted on. What a very gruesome death. And in our number one spot, we have the severed hands. While doing a number of digs in Abaris, Egypt, one archaeologist found four different pits filled with severed hands. Yep. Nothing else, just piles and piles of hands. Each hand belonged to a different person, and they had been buried there 3,600 years ago. Now, before you think there's like some morbid hand serial killer on the loose, no, there actually is an explanation for this. But I don't think it makes it less creepy. So, back in the day, it was a practice to actually remove the hand of your enemy. It was thought that by doing so, you would steal their power. You then could trade these hands in for a reward. The hands were then buried into these ceremonial pits. I'm just glad that this isn't a practice anymore. Starting off this countdown, we have King Tut's dagger. Upon excavating the tomb of King Tut in 1925, scientists discovered a long 34 centimeter dagger wrapped up with King Tut. Now, back then, there was no way for them to do studies on the dagger without damaging it. However, an x ray done in 1970 showed that the dagger was made of some interesting compounds, primarily nickel and iron. Back then, iron was considered very rare. And how could it have been composed of iron when his burial predated Egypt's Iron Age by nearly 2,000 years? So right there, that's a little shocking. As a result of the iron and nickel composition, scientists have declared it was made from extraterrestrial metal. Now, there are two theories here. One is that a meteorite crashed down and then they used that to make the dagger. Theory two is that the dagger was made by aliens and dropped or left by them accidentally. I mean, some honestly do think that the ancient Egyptians were in contact with aliens. If that's the case, then the dagger might have originally been from the ETs. Coming in number nine, we have the Dropa Stones. The Dropa Stones are maybe the wildest discovery when it comes to artifacts from space. These are basically CDs from 10,000 years ago that have a whole story on them that talk about aliens crash landing on Earth and then giving some tools to humans. Okay, let me backtrack a little bit. These stones were found in a cave in China. At first glance, they seem to have hieroglyphs all over them and almost like they were created 
traded for a phonograph. When deciphered, there was a whole story of aliens coming to Earth that were named the Dropa. They crashed on Earth, met humans in the area, gave them tech, fixed their ship, and then bounced. When you play these Dropa discs, they hum and vibrate like they're creating some sort of energy. And that is where all the research stops. On the record, these things were just put away and no one ever looked at them again. But you and I both know that is a bunch of horse poop. These were obviously taken somewhere to be researched behind a watchful eye. Coming in at number 8, we have the US Delta II rocket. Back in January of 1997, a woman named Lottie Williams was out minding her own business on a nice little walk. To her surprise, she was greeted by a streak of light in the sky. And all of a sudden, she felt something brush her shoulder. Turns out that this thing that brushed her was part of a US Delta II rocket. The rocket was launched in 1996. A year later, it came crashing down in pieces. Lottie said when she felt something brush by, she turned around and saw something on the ground. It was a small piece of burnt mesh. Now she is extremely lucky because had it been a bigger piece, it probably would have knocked her down and killed her. Here's the thing, analysis shows that it's most likely part of the Delta II rocket. Most likely, still not 100% confirmed. For all we know, that could be a piece from an alien spacecraft. Coming in at number 7 we have the pyramids. Here's the thing, do I actually think that pyramids came from space? Do I think that aliens came down from space and came to humans and were like, dudes, we're aliens, we're from the future, we got tech, it's so cool, it's gonna blow your socks off and we're gonna make a civilization so sick with some big triangles that come out of the ground and you can put your coolest dead bodies in them. No, I don't think that. I think that the pyramids were made with an insane amount of manpower because back then life was cheaper than it is now and you could just have an army of slaves move rocks until they physically couldn't and then could just bring in a new army. That's how I think they did it. Also no one had a phone back then so you couldn't even get distracted while you were on the job. What are you going to try and do? Build a sandcastle? That would have been impossible because there was literally no water around. But that being said there are a lot of people who think that the pyramids could have been built by some alien coming down to earth and giving humans the tools to build these monuments with the precision of having them pointing at north, east, south, and west with some people thinking that they are power plants that could create electricity. I think most of the people who think that have never been to Egypt, but you know it's good to make those assumptions after watching 30 minutes worth of YouTube videos. Moving on to number 6 we have the Russian tank. In March of 2011, a man was out hiking in northwestern Colorado when he came across something strange. The object was round and warm to touch. It was also in a crater, meaning whatever this was had just crashed down from space. The hiker then called military aerospace officials. Later, it was revealed that this weird object was the tank from a Russian Zenit 3 rocket. The rocket was launched in January. Two months later, it came crashing back down. Fun fact, it's one of only a handful of space debris to be found in the US. But seriously, imagine being out for a walk and seeing something fly towards you from the sky. Like damn, that's another thing to worry about, being killed by space debris. Coming in at number 5 we have the Roman Decahedron. Some sort of 3D octagon and no one knows what they do. Like zero people have been able to figure out what these things were for and one of the weirdest parts about them is that we have found a lot of them. They seem to all come from the Roman era and were moved out to every territory that the Romans controlled. There are over 100 of these strange devices that have been found and there are several guesses as to what they could do. Some people think they could have been some sort of status symbol. To have one in your home would have meant you were rich and in good grace with the Emperor of Rome. They might have just been decoration or they could have been some sort of communication device from space and it's how the Romans were able to be so powerful. In our fourth spot we have the Roswell Rock. This rock is a very weird rock with a detailed design. The rock is uniform in color, unusually smooth and has a design protruding from the surface of it. This rock was found in Roswell, New Mexico in 2004 by a man named Robert Ridge. He was a deer hunter. Apparently he found this rock half sticking out of the ground and was shocked by its unusual and perfect design as well as its strange magnetic properties. Upon analyzing it, people have realized that the rock's design actually matches a crop circle that was found in England in 1996, which makes this whole thing that much weirder. Now, some are convinced that this rock is some message sent by aliens. After experts have analyzed the design, they notice that it's a pattern of a sun and a moon inside of a circle. A woman named Linda Moulton Howe, who's an investigative journalist, believes that aliens are trying to teach us about astronomy with this rock, or that the rock contains a date for some event that has or will happen. It's 
pretty spooky. I just wish we knew more about this weird rock. Coming in number three, we have fungus. When you look at all the living beings on this planet, why has fungus got its own spot? I mean, those things are just plants, right? Wrong. Fungus are some of the most advanced life forms on the planet. They have functionality that spreads in extreme diversity from species to species. Some of them have the ability to mind control a host and then kill it so it spreads spores. Others have advanced communication techniques that allow them to find the most direct routes to one another. Because of this, there's speculation that fungus might have come here by a Aliens, or might have touched down on Earth via meteor. In at number two, we have the Betts Mystery Sphere. On March 27, 1974, the Betts family were out examining a small bushfire near their property. While doing so, the family came across a completely smooth metal sphere. It was about the size of a bowling ball. On this sphere, there was a triangle engraved in it. They took it home only to find that it had strange properties. One day when their son was playing his guitar in the same room as this sphere, it started to emit a throbbing sound from it. The sound was strong enough to hurt the family's dog's ears. This sphere can also change directions. So if you push it across the floor, it will roll forward and then stop and then roll back all on its own. It's also said to be able to absorb power from solar energy. It's said to be more active when exposed to the sun. Now if they refuse to let any Anyone analyze it until they link the sphere to paranormal activity that was happening around the house. Like doors would slam by themselves and they would hear this weird organ music. Now scientists have analyzed it and they said it was just a normal sphere. How late? But the family is convinced that something is controlling it. Maybe something of the extraterrestrial nature. Seriously, where did this sphere come from and what's the deal with its weird properties? Seems like it came from space. And coming at the number one spot, we have alien coins. So who do we always see plastered on coins? Well, it's our most rich and famous people, the ones that define our culture at the time, or the rulers that control the area. And if you don't put their face on the money, they will for sure cut your head off. Well, then there's a bunch of questions as to why some alien coins were found in Egypt. There was a massive renovation done on some homes in Egypt, which dug up one of the strangest artifacts to date. They were a series of coins that were found that had not a queen's head on them or a pharaoh, but an alien dude. Like the one that looks like he's pulled right out of the movies. Like the green dude with the big head and the green skin, you know, all that stuff going on. You guys know what I'm talking about. But this dude had like a toga on, so he kind of looked a little bit boss. There were also several coins that were found that seemed to have spaceships on them. If the ruler theory is right, there could have been an alien ruler who came down from the stars in ancient Egypt. Someone who maybe crash landed and needed to get his ship fixed and while he was waiting for his repairs to be done he was worshipped like a god. At number 10 we have King Henry IV's head. I want to be such a badass in my life that when I die people put in such an effort to make sure I stay dead. Either that or they do some sort of weekend at Bernie situation with strings on me and I'm dancing around. Well when King Henry IV was assassinated they cut off his head and buried it in another location. The location was a mystery to everyone until 2010 when it was found in some tax collector's attic. The dude had a 17th century cranium stored up there like old baby pictures. This guy bought it off an elderly couple. The elderly couple snagged the head in an auction in the late 19th century. Okay, I want to add to what I want to live like. I want to be such an awesome person in my life that people are selling my body parts off at an auction. It'll be like, next up, we got Che Dorena's prize scrotum. It said that if you pull off one of the hairs, any wish will come true. Coming in at number 9 is the tiny alien and yes I found this one after pulling one of those scrotum hairs and wishing on it. Honestly I don't even know with this one so back in 2003 in the Atacama Desert of Chile, archaeologists found a 6 inch tall mummified skeleton with a pointed head. And if you see the picture of this thing it's actually tiny like it's the size of my foot more or less and, and now I can't tell if I've exposed that my feet are big or that this thing was tiny. My feet are normal sized I swear. Either way after close examination researchers found the skeleton to have the bone density of a 6 year old kid despite its miniature size. Even scientists were like could this be our first ever alien specimen? Sadly not. After more and more thorough investigation they found out the skeleton was in fact human after all, probably related to the indigenous Chileans. There were 7 different mutations in her growth genes which most likely explains her overall smallness but it is a sight to see honestly I've never seen a skull shape like that and I'm not throwing shade at all it's it's interesting 
All right, your favorite host is back, or back with number eight, Head on a Stick. Way back in the day when we were still swinging around clubs and we didn't really know what to do with dead bodies. Cremating someone and then throwing their ashes over the parking lot at Cheesecake Factory by their request is a very new thing. Well, these Stone Age dudes thought taking heads and mounting them on sticks was the best course of action. An archeological dig in Sweden found a bunch of heads mounted on sticks that dated back way before the Greeks were laying around with rock hard abs. It's unknown why these cavemen decided to shish kebab these skulls. They might have been enemies and mounting the heads to sticks could have been a warning to other people not to come around or you're gonna end up like this head on a stick. Or it could have been a nice thing. Maybe when your buddy dies, you put his head on a stick so you can bring him around and give him little forehead kisses forever. It did seem like some sort of ritual because where they found the mounted heads, there were loads of animal bones scattered everywhere. Filling our number 7 slot is the Apple Store, and no I'm not about to mention the 13th century Apple Store that archaeologists randomly found, and with it the iPhone minus 10C or X or whatever you want to call it. So basically back in 2013 the company was breaking ground in Madrid in order to build another Apple Store because clearly they thought they didn't have enough. While construction crew were excavating the area they found the remnants of a 15th century hospital just casually. The hospital was in use way back in the 1400s and treated victims of the plague. It was demolished in 1854 and sealed below the street until the Apple store came along. When asked about the situation, Apple said they want to incorporate the ruins of the hospital into the glass box store design. So you know, if you walk into the Madrid store, you'll find the iPhones on your left, earpods on your right, and the hospital ruins and corpses way at the back. Do ask for assistance from an employee if need be. And I am your favorite host. Back again guys with number 6, smallpox scabs. You go to the library and you try to make your brain smarter and then the only thing that happens is you come in contact with an ancient disease. You pause your Netflix and pick up books only to get punished for it. This is like when there was E. coli in the romaine lettuce. Well in 2003 Suzanne Caro went to check out some books at the Santa Fe College Library. She picked out some old civil war books because she's a fun time and in the book there was an envelope. Because she's a curious little devil she decided to open them up and found a bunch of scabs. Scabs in an envelope? Must be my birthday. She found out by reading this old timey book that the scabs were taking off patients with smallpox during the civil war. So she kept them, then dipped them in chocolate and served them to her friends at a dinner party. I'm just kidding guys, she called the center for disease control because she's not as imaginative as I am. Coming in at number 5 is the letter. During the demolition of a fireplace in a house located in Cabosham, builder Lewis Shaw found a letter. The letter was written sometime in the 40s by a little boy called David. I know you were hoping it was like some sort of murder confession letter or a steamy cheating confession, but alas, it was just a letter to Santa Claus. In it, he wrote, Dear Father Christmas, that was quite formal. Anyway, Dear Father Christmas, please can you send me a Rupert annual and a drum box of chalks, soldiers, and Indians slipping and any little toys you have to spare. Love, David. Well, any little toys you have to spare, how cute is that? Like, mate, he has a factory run by elves. He has more than a little to spare. Lewis really wanted to track David down to give him the letter, so he actually made a hashtag find David media campaign and actually managed to find him alive and well. The internet. There you go. You'd assume David would have been like, bro, I wrote this 60 years ago, you think I care now? But he was actually quite surprised and found it quite cute considering his kids now either asking for a motorbike or a bunch of Barbies. Chalk and slippers just won't cut it in this day and age, David. Get with it. At number 4 on the list, we have the Essex Sarcophagus. A Stephen Drake was checking out an old home in the middle of being touched up. While walking through, he came to a big gap in the wall. He decided to peek through. Now if this was a horror movie, this would be the point where something jumps into his eye and sucks out his brain. But instead of having his brain sucked out, he found a 3000 year old sarcophagus that was left there by the previous owner. The guy who used to own the home was now dead, so Stephen took the sarcophagus to get carbon dated and it turns out the thing was legit. I hope Stephen got a fat payday for that. Some weird stuff about this is no one knows where the dead owner got this thing from and there also was no body inside the sarcophagus so no one knows where the mummy body went. Filling on number 3 slot is the baby. I can't even wrap my head around why someone would even do this or how they would do it but here we go. Back in 1850 a Parisian couple were getting some work done on their home. Workers came in and started digging up the floor and walls and a mummified baby just fell out of the wall. Legit they were probably like 
is this yours? Obviously, the couple was suspected of killing the baby right away, but they were quickly exonerated. The doctor used changes in corpses and flies to determine they didn't do it. First off, how on earth do you put a baby dead or alive in a wall? Forget dead, how do you have the heart to put a live baby in a wall and board it back up? Secondly, how are flies good murder conviction evidence? Like, am I the only one that thinks this is sus? This is sus, guys. And sadly enough, cases of mummified babies are so common even even now, I mean, two were found in 2007, and those are just the two that I know of. I'm sure if I researched it more, I'd find a bunch. This just, this just hurts my heart. I'm sorry. Che's here for comic relief, and I'm here for the morbid stories. Hey guys, I'm back to bring a smile to your face after Eamon bummed you out. On number two, we have the mass grave of Tomb County Galway. Okay, maybe I'm gonna bum you out too. In an archaeological dig, I bet you want to find like dinosaur bones or old weaponry, maybe even some fossilized dinosaur poop. That's a real thing you should look it up. Underneath the former home for single mothers in Tomb County, Ireland, was the remains of 796 babies. What the hell? It was a super baby grave. This is like something that came out of a Rob Zombie movie. Like it's literally almost House of a Thousand Corpses. Between the years of 1925 and 1961, the home was run by the Bon Secure nuns, and it was a place where single mothers could go to get support. However, the nuns would often neglect the children which they were left to take care of. This would lead to them dying, and then they would wrap them in a sheet and dump their bodies in a septic tank. When the discovery was made, a home was built over top of the burial site to pay homage to the infants. That was so chilling, I never want to think about it again. Now we gotta go back to Eamon. Oof. Hi guys, I'm back. Hopefully you don't find me as dull as Che thinks you do. And finally, at number one is post-death partum. So yeah, you probably do find me as dull as Che thinks you do. Once upon a time, 1,300 years ago, in a small Italian town of Imola, a woman died. And that's the end of number one. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Archaeologists found said woman in 2010 and the skeletal remains seemed odd. Her skeleton was fine, but archaeologists found a strange cluster of tiny bones in between her legs, which obviously turned out to be the remains of her fetus that she somehow gave birth to after her death. If we investigate this further CSI style, she was buried face up, so that implied she was purposely buried. She was in her late 20s, early 30s, and her baby was only two weeks away from being full term. The baby's legs were still inside the mum, but their head and upper body was born after she died, and that's referred to as a coffin birth. Did you guys know that was a thing? Because I certainly did not know that was a thing. What happens is that a gas builds up inside the dead woman, which pushes the fetus out of the birth canal, something that has rarely ever been seen in archaeological history. And that's not even the end of it. They also found a hole drilled into the woman's skull, which is common back then to relieve things like head injuries, headaches, or to get rid of evil spirits. If any of you need that treatment after listening to Che, hit me up. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Spider Rock Art. In 2013, archaeologists were shocked to discover what can only be described as a wall of ancient spider art in the desert. It's the only known example of its kind from the old world. Dating has put the age of this to around 4000 BC, that's over 6000 years ago. The drawings depict spiders, their webs, and even ensnared prey. Historians have struggled to learn more about the people who actually drew these and their strange obsession with spiders. Some believe it's part of an ancient totemic ritual to combine the spider with the power of the sun. Sounds kind of terrifying. Next up on number 9 now, we have the Sailing Stones. For many years, scientists were baffled by a mysterious phenomenon in Death Valley, one of the hottest deserts in the world. Heavy stones seem to be moving by themselves in the mud, leaving trails behind them. Sometimes they were straight, sometimes they were curvy, sometimes they just sharply changed direction. There were no footprints and no obvious ways that these stones were just moving across the desert floor. Theories sprouted up, including everything from magnetic fields to aliens or even the supernatural. Right now, the best scientific theory is that under certain winter conditions in Death Valley, enough ice and water can form to float the rocks across the muddy surface in a light breeze, leaving a trail of mud as they go. At number 8 now, we have the Band of Holes. In the Nasa Plateau in Peru lie about 6,000 man-made holes. They begin at the edge of a valley and run up a hill for about a kilometer and a half. Each one is about a meter in diameter and 50 centimeters deep. Here's the thing, locals have no idea how they were made. Archaeologists have been studying them for over 80 years now, trying to figure out their origin and their purpose. It's thought they were made by the Inca Empire, but theories have ranged for their existence from graves to storage sites. Moving on 
to number 7 now we have desert glass. When scientists tested a scarab jewel that belonged to Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun, they were surprised to find the glass inside came from before the earliest Egyptian civilization. So this begs the question, where exactly did that glass come from? Eventually they found it came from a thin sheet of glass sprinkled across a huge part of the Sahara Desert. They calculated that this glass could only have been made by a meteor impacting the atmosphere and creating a huge fireball cooking the sand below with temperatures of up to 18,000 degrees Celsius or 32,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Next up at number 6 now we have the oldest pot stash in the world. In 2008 archaeologists found almost 2 pounds of marijuana in a 2,700 year old grave in China's Gobi Desert. That age makes it the oldest stash of cannabis ever discovered. What exactly was it doing there in that grave? Well according to Dr. Ethan Russo it could have been for pain control or to aid in mystic divination. The stash is now being stored in the Turpin Museum in China. Moving on to number 5 now we have the Marie Man. In the late 1980s someone flying over a remote part of the South Australian desert spotted an image below. A huge hunter naked and armed with a stick. It could either be a woomera or a boomerang. The man is 2.6 miles tall and is actually still visible today. Experts know it must have been made in modern times as there was no record of its existence before but it's an absolute mystery as to who designed this thing. Many people have come forward claiming that it was them but nothing is known for sure. At number 4 now we have the fairy circles. Deep in the Namibian desert lie millions of strange fairy circles. The circles are devoid of any life but the edges are surrounded by knee high grass. Nothing will grow in the middle even when fertilized soil is added. The circles can reach up to 20 meters in diameter and seem to have been evenly spaced out. They never overlap. They also seem to have a lifespan of at least 70 75 years. Right now the leading explanation for their existence is different termite colonies who don't want to encroach on each other's territory. Next up at number 3 spot now we have the plains. Now what's one thing you don't expect to find buried in an old desert? Plains. During the 2003 coalition invasion of Iraq the US military was surprised by the lack of enemy planes there. Intelligence reports had said that Saddam Hussein had them before the war so where exactly were they? A few months into the war someone noticed a tail fin sticking out of the sand near a military base. After some digging they found 30 brand new Iraqi planes. For whatever reason Saddam had thought he could just bury these million dollar pieces of machinery in the sand and then just dig them up later. Didn't really go to plan. Coming at number 2 now we have the Nabta Player. Deep in the Sahara Desert a stone age community built the Nabta Player. A series of standing stones built 6,500 years ago. This makes them 1,000 years older than Stonehenge and the oldest astronomical alignment of its kind ever discovered. Some of the stones face in a north south direction, others from east to west. This seems to tell archaeologists that it had some sort of astrological significance. Perhaps they were used to mark the summer solstice or the beginning of the rainy season, back when this desert received a lot more rain. Either way the mysterious stones are so steeped in history that we may never know the full picture. And finally at number 1 now we have the mysterious oasis. In 2014 shepherds in the Tunisian desert were shocked to find a huge beautiful blue lake where there definitely wasn't one before. Before long locals were arriving to enjoy the oasis and call off in the extreme heat. The thing is people aren't really sure where that lake came from. Some people point the finger at seismic activity causing groundwater to rise to the surface. What's even stranger though is that the water started out clear and then turned blue and then after a few days it was green and filled with algae. The public safety office there issued a public warning that the lake is dangerous and unfit for swimming but the mystery of its origin continues. Starting us off at number 10 is the claw. So back in 1986 an expedition was undertaken on mountain Owen in New Zealand since there was a network of unexplored caves under the mountain. Yes because exploring caves with little to no light always ends well for everyone involved. Thankfully nothing horror movie esque happened other than them finding a few bones here and there and then a gigantic claw. And on Honest to God when I saw the picture of it I was like what the hell was living in that cave and I hope to God it didn't have kids. Forget kids what if it's hungry cousins were nearby like you're still done for either way. And I'm not even talking like a small bear claw I'm talking four massive claws that were most likely attached to a dinosaur ready to steal your kids and your wife. Hide your kids, hide your wife. Now it definitely wasn't Jurassic Park 2.0 but the team managed to find 3,000 year old remains of an upland moa which was basically a flightless bird. 
flightless or not, it could still probably tear you apart on foot. Coming in at number nine is the caveman. And before you skip this one because you think it's just one of those basic old cavemen that we keep finding, it's not. Just putting that disclaimer out there. One day, a speleologist, someone who studies caves, by the way, was looking through the Lamalunga cave network in Italy when he found the Altamura man. And I kid you not, if you have trypophobia, I really recommend not looking at this one or its pictures because it's really just very cringy. I get goosebumps just thinking about it and looking at it and I, I just I don't want to. The skeleton of this man was covered with white bumps as was the cave. It's like the man and the cave just became one. And I honestly don't know where one started and the other ended. What really happened was that a Neanderthal from way back when must have fallen into the cave and died of starvation. Eons later, a layer of calcium carbonate built over his remains, thus preserving them but also making you want to vomit. Basically, the cave ate him and is still eating him. After scraping off a bit of his shoulder, researchers concluded that Altamura man is the oldest Neanderthal ever found. Fact of the day. At number eight, we have cannibalism. We need backstory for this one because how did they just magically dig up cannibalism? They didn't. Relax. Back in 1845, the Franklin expedition was a British voyage of Arctic exploration which went promisingly underway but ended up in disaster. On the way, the HMS Erebus and HMS Terror got stuck in the ice and were trapped a lot longer than expected due to very cold summers. By 1848, the 129 men aboard the ships decided to leave and do a 1,000 mile trek to the closest trading port, which was Hudson Bay. On the way there, researchers were sure the men suffered from many things like scurvy, hypothermia, lead poisoning, etc., that could have been what caused them to leave their ships, which were essentially their only food source. Like they packed enough food to last them five to seven years, yet they still left. Something doesn't add up. None of the men survived, and even the Inuit of the area stayed away from that region because food was so scarce. After recovering around 35 bones from the area, anthropologists noticed the bones had been broken and many had cut marks indicating someone had cut the flesh from the bones, so cannibalism definitely had occurred amongst the crew. But the bones also exposed something a lot more gruesome. They also showed signs of pot polishing, which means the ends of the bones were heated in a boiling cooking pot. And that only ever happens in the last stage of cannibalism when someone extracts the marrow from a bone to get any nutrition they possibly can. This all goes hand in hand with what Inuit eyewitnesses said they saw, which were piles and piles of fractured human bones. Filling our number seven slot is the sewer. So I didn't know excavation could be done in sewers, but apparently it can. So a group was doing just that under a Byzantine bathhouse in Israel. After a while of finding nothing, they started coming across hundreds of thousands of little bones. And after finding nearly 100 bodies, they realized they were waist deep into a sewer that was specifically for getting rid of newborn babies. Despite doing a lot of research, no one knows the real reason all the bones are down there. Initially, researchers thought it was just for female infants, since at the time, the parents of these kids would have seen girls as less valuable. Thank God we grew out of that, guys. But either way, some of the bones also belonged to male babies, so it wasn't that either. And that's how far their research went. I wish I could tell you more. So, in conclusion, we found a hundred baby corpses in a sewer and we're just apparently gonna just sweep it under the rug and move on. Now at number six are the headless vikings. So along a road in Dorset, archaeologists were doing some digging when they came across the remains of 54 viking mercenaries. But the scary part was that all the corpses were headless. The group went on to record the positioning of the bones when they realized everything was conveniently in its own pile. The heads were all together, the legs and arms were arranged, as were the torsos. Initial theory were that the Vikings tried to occupy a village nearby, failed, and then the villagers came and murdered them and took some of the skulls as souvenirs. Honestly, I highly doubt this because aren't Vikings meant to be pretty jacked and very good at fighting? I feel like they would have beat the villagers. Another more viable theory was that the Vikings may have been sacrificed in a ritual which explains the bone arrangements but has no link with the culture around the area, so you win some, you lose some. Coming in at number five is the Screaming Mummy. So back in 1886, Gaston Maspero, the head of the Egyptian antiquity service was bringing mummies out of their sarcophagi. Side note, I love when the plural of something ends in I, it's just very amusing to me. Anyway, he came across one sarcophagus that was quite plain. The ones of queens and kings usually say very clearly who's buried inside, but this one was just a bit of a mystery. Inside, it was wrapped in sheepskin, which was seen as low class and unclean in ancient Egypt. Either way, when Gaston finally uncovered it, the corpse's hands and feet were bound together, and the person also died 
died screaming or so it seemed. It looked like the person had been tortured mid death or was buried alive or maybe even poisoned. As sadistic as that sounds, after a lot more research into mummification, they realized unless the jaw is strapped shut when the body is mummified, then the jaw just naturally falls open anyway. So in that regard I guess all mummies are screaming mummies, but this person known as Unknown Man E was the first. At number 4 is the pit. So back in 2012, archaeologists were surveying an area in Bergheim, France when they found around 5 acres of pits called silos absolutely filled to the brim with human bones. They uncovered 60 silos, 14 of which were filled with bones, because that's totally normal in this day and age. One of the silos just had dismembered human bones which shows a hell of a lot of amputation took place to fill it up. Other bodies were found which had suffered trauma blows and stabbings as well. Why are we uncovering so many pits or tombs filled with suspicious dead bodies? Like, How do people not have to report this stuff or write it up back then? Like, I'm very confused. Either way, bodies of adults, children and even infants were found and were estimated to be around 5,000 years old. Filling our number 3 slot is chemical warfare. So back in 1933, an archaeologist by the name of Robert Dumesnil was doing a dig near Dura Europa which is where the Persians seized the Romans. I this whole video is a history lesson, I love it. During the dig, he went through several tunnels and he happened upon the bodies of 19 Roman soldiers. All the bodies were positioned as if they died running away from someone or something and at the end of the tunnel was a single Persian soldier found literally clutching his chest in his armour. After an investigation and then a reinvestigation of the original dig, another archaeologist found that all 20 men died due to one of the earliest attempts at chemical warfare. The Roman tunnel was above the Persian one so they planned to break into them from above but obviously the Persians could hear everything thing they were doing. So the Persians came up with a plan to light a fire in the tunnel and throw bitumen and sulfur on the flames which caused all of them to die. As they breathed the choking gas inside, it turned into sulfuric acid in their lungs leaving them all dying a slow and painful death. Now at number 2 are the Polish vampires. In 2016, a group of archaeologists were doing a dig in a cemetery located in West Poland. They uncovered graves dating back to the 13th and 14th century but it was the way the bodies were buried that caused their attention. All the corpses were either mutilated, decapitated, punctured in the spine or sacrum, pinned down from the neck or bound. All these methods were believed to physically stop the dead from rising again so researchers believe the locals assumed these people were vampires. One woman who died was believed to have kyphosis, a condition that gave her a hunch which could have led people to believe she was a vampire. She was buried face down and her knees were broken in various places. Another man with the same condition was buried the same way and a third body was buried with their head between two big stones and I just feel bad for this person. Most of these bodies were probably not vampires at all but victims of cholera and people believe the first person to die from an outbreak would return as a vampire. That's sound logic. And finally at number 1 is the murder tomb. Back in 2009 a group of archaeologists were excavating the bottom of a prehistoric dry lake bed located in Motala, Sweden. They weren't expecting to find much since they were just doing it because the area was being paved for a new railway line but they struck gold. I don't know if I can even call this striking gold but sure. They ended up uncovering a stone tomb structure of some sort at the bottom of the lake and after getting it open discovered the skulls of 10 people. All of them were 8000 years old and it ranged from elderly skeletons to babies as well so no one was spared in whatever was going on. But it gets even worse. After digging deeper they found fragments of other skulls lodged into an 11th skull. I don't know how you would even shove skull fragments inside someone else's brain while they're still alive. This is some Hannibal Ting right here. Anyway, they also found a lot of bodies that had been torched alive and that had stakes driven through them. And that wasn't even from guessing. The group literally found two skulls with stakes melded into their skulls. No one can think of why the murder tomb was there. Perhaps some warriors mounted the skulls of their victims onto stakes. Or maybe some innocent people were killing off a vampire infestation. I have no idea. Starting off off this countdown we have the creepy tiny hand. In June of 2018, archaeologists working at the Roman fort of Vindolanda found this very creepy lifelike miniature bronze hand. Like it even creeped them out. They were like whoa what the hell is that? 
Anyways, the hand was found near a temple that was devoted to the god Jupiter Dolichinus. Apparently, a mysterious cult would worship Jupiter there. So they think that this hand has something to do with all that cult and worshipping things. Others think that the hand was left there as an offering after a major invasion in Scotland in which a number of people got killed. So hands down, it's probably cursed. Get it? Hands down. In our ninth spot today, we have the out of place bones. So let's talk about Stonehenge for a second now. There's already so much mystery surrounding the monuments there, but things got stranger when a number of bones were excavated in the area. Now, finding bones at a historical site is not new news, but the thing with these bones is that they came from more than 100 miles away. So the people that were buried there weren't even living there. So that means that people would carry the dead people's bodies to Stonehenge and then bury them there. And scientists still aren't sure why. Even if it was just a burial site, why would people transport bodies from miles and miles away just to be buried there? It must have had some significant purpose. Coming in at number eight, we have the monster cows. Now, if you guys know me by now, then you know I absolutely love cows. But what I didn't know is that back in the day, there used to be giant cows that they called monster cows, now referred to as auruk. These monster cows were double the size of normal cattle and they were big enough to provide food for 300 people. So yeah, they were chunkers. <laughs> well, in 2018, archaeologists discovered hoof prints from this cow. Sadly, engineers working in the area accidentally punctured a large hole through a structure near Stonehenge and then destroyed some of the cow print. In the area, they also unearthed cow jaws. Now here's a crazy theory. Some researchers believe that Stonehenge was built with the help of these monster cows, which is how the giant stones got transported there. The cows lugged them around. This hasn't been proven though, it's just a theory. In our seventh spot, we have the Valley of Golden Mummies. Back in 1996, a man named Zahi Hawis and his team discovered 250 mummies. These mummies were located about 380 kilometers west of the pyramids. Initially, they found only 105 mummies. They excavated four tombs and that's when they found these mummies. All of them were adorned with chest plates and were covered with a tinge of golden colors. Hence why they were given the name of the Golden Mummy. All of them were around 2,000 years old, yet they were in pretty damn good condition. As they kept searching, more and more mummies were found. It's believed that over the years, 10,000 mummies have been found, which is absolutely insane. In our sixth spot today, we have the black sarcophagus. In July of 2018, a massive black mysterious sarcophagus was found in Egypt. It apparently is over 2,000 years old. People were so scared of this thing, they're like, don't open it. They thought it would contain a curse that would end the world. I mean, it was very strange. Sarcophagus are often painted and are bright and have details on it. This was just a sealed black granite case. When it was opened, it contained the remains of three Egyptian army officers, as well as nasty reddish brown sewage liquid. If you've seen the hashtag sarcophagus juice meme, then you know that this is where it came from. But honestly, with how the current state of the world is right now, maybe opening the sarcophagus did unleash a curse. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the underground labyrinth of death. Archaeologists working at a monument in Peru in 2018 have discovered 35 interlocking underground secret tunnels. They didn't actually go explore themselves, so they sent down these like robot things to search the temple. Well, while down there, they found a number of creepy graves, as well as several people buried underneath rocks. They believed that these people were sacrificed in rituals and then buried in this labyrinth. Hence why it's called the Labyrinth of Death. It's just filled with dead people. If you thought the Paris catacombs were scary, wait till you go to this place. Archaeologists are currently doing studies on the bodies buried there to figure out more about this area and, you know, the dead people. In our fourth spot, we have the lead encased hearts. In 2015, archaeologists exploring the convent of the Jacobins in France found something pretty shocking. They found five lead shaped hearts. Upon opening them, they found five human hearts on the inside. So the case was symbolic of what was on the inside. You know, a little heart with the heart inside. It's cute, kind of. The heart shaped urn locket things dated back to 400 years ago. Now, of course, they didn't want to destroy this discovery, so they did a number 
of tests on the hearts, including MRIs and CTs. That's when it was revealed that most of the hearts had a disease. Most had plaque buildup in the heart's arteries. Turns out that it was common during this time period for someone to be buried with the heart of their husband or wife. And that's kind of cute. Like it shows that you have their heart or they have yours forever. Coming in at number three, we have the gerbil teeth. The Lothagim North Pillar site in Kenya is the oldest and largest cemetery site in Eastern Africa. Over the years, a number of treasures have been unearthed there. From ivory rings to jewelry made out of beautiful, colorful gemstones, and even gerbil headdresses. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Archaeologists unearthed a headpiece made out of 405 gerbil teeth. First off, how many gerbils did they need to complete this project? Second, why gerbils? Third, who the hell counted all those gerbil teeth to know that it was actually composed of 405 teeth? These are the questions I need answers to, people. In our second spot, we had the Neanderthals. Over in Goyet, Belgium, scientists made a shocking discovery. They unearthed a burial site for Neanderthals. Most of them were eaten alive by other Neanderthals. Six of the individuals had marks on their bones that suggested that other Neanderthals were carving their flesh off of them and then eating them. They had clear signs of cutting and fractures in their bones. The eaters would do this because it would allow them to extract the bone marrow from the body. So that's great. Back in the day, humans ate one another. And in our number one spot today, we have the pit full of heads. As you can imagine, this is as horrifying as it seems. So while working at the Great Wall of China, archaeologists found a number of interesting items. They found thousands of jade items and axes and scepters, and then they found a pit full of severed heads. They found about 80 heads in six pits under the city's walls. It is believed that they were all victims of sacrifices during the city's founding ceremony, and all of them were young. Young women. In fact, after analyzing the bones, it showed that they were not from the area, so they were kidnapped, taken as captives, and then sacrificed. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the SS Walling Bar 2. Quite recently, just a few years ago, just off of the east coast of Australia, the wreckage of the ship was discovered. This ship sank in 1943 during the war after being struck by two torpedoes sent from a Japanese submarine. The ship sank in just minutes, with only five crew members surviving and the rest of the 32 on board sadly losing their lives. The acting minister for veterans at the time, Jeff Lee, said, quote, This secret has been hidden at the bottom of the deep sea for decades, and this find will give some closure for the descendants and relatives of the 32 people who lost their lives. Another interesting fact about the sinking of this ship is that when it went down, it was carrying boxes of butter and bacon, which then went on to be washed up on the shores. This led to a huge influx of cake baking, which in this time was normally restricted because of the food rationing. In our number 9 spot today, we have a German bomb. This is one discovery that was definitely found accidentally. In August of 2015, construction workers in East London found something that I don't think anyone was expecting when they unearthed an unexploded 500-pound German bomb from World War II that, if detonated, could easily destroy the surrounding homes and buildings. Yeah, not terrifying at all, right? Of course, this site was immediately blocked off and 700 people ended up being evacuated until things could return to normal safely. The British Army's Royal Logistics Corps Explosive Ordnance Disposal Unit took 24 terrifying hours to make this device safe, which thankfully they were able to do without incident. It is thought that there are likely many more of these scary undetonated bombs around because they are the result of bombs that were dropped but failed to go off. Some didn't go off and won't ever because they were made in error, but most of them just had simple technical difficulties that now, if mishandled, could cause the bomb to detonate. It's all terrifying, but thankfully this one didn't go on to do any harm. In our number 8 spot today, we have the USS Lexington. In 2018, researchers were able to locate the wreckage of the USS Lexington, which was a US aircraft carrier that was used in the Second World War. This discovery came at the bottom of the Coral Sea, about 800 kilometers off of the coast of eastern Australia. It is said that the Lexington is one of the capital ships that were lost during the war. It was originally commissioned as a battle cruiser, but in 1925, it was instead launched as an aircraft carrier. From May 4th to May 8th, 1942, this ship and the USS Yorktown faced off against three Japanese carriers in the Battle of the Coral Sea. While both the Lexington and the Yorktown put up a great fight, on May 8th, the Lexington ended up being damaged when it was hit by multiple torpedoes and bombs. This was already bad, but things got much worse when a second
secondary explosion led to raging fires, which then led to the crew abandoning ship. On the evening of May 8th, in order to prevent the ship from being captured, it was scuttled or deliberately sunk by the USS Phelps, but not until the surviving 2,770 crew members and officers were rescued. Sadly, this was not every member, however, as it is said that 216 people lost their lives in this battle. In our number 7 spot today, we have the USS Nevada. This ship for many years was deemed unsinkable, but after a long resume of battle, that unfortunately wasn't the case. The USS Nevada, during the 1941 surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, was the only ship to get away in one piece, albeit barely. It took years to repair the ship, but once done, she was returned to battle in 1944 to support the Normandy invasion, and a year after that, it assisted in two more invasions and two atomic bomb tests. After the war ended, they finally decided that, hey, this gal's seen enough, and they decided to retire her, but not before using her as target practice. It took a lot of ammo and five days to do it, but they finally sank the ship with a torpedo being the final strike. After the sinking, the Navy wasn't exactly sure where it would end up. I mean, it was over 15,000 feet below the surface of the ocean, so it really could have gone anywhere. Cut all the way to 2020 during an expedition by Ocean Infinity and Search Inc, and the ship was finally once again located. She ended up just 65 nautical miles southwest of Pearl Harbor. In our number six spot today, we have the aircraft wreck. In 2017, divers discovered not only the remains of a wreck of an American B-24, the Tulsa America bomber that was downed just off of the shores of Croatia in 1944, but inside of the wreck, they also found the remains of those who lost their lives in the incident. This is one of many aircrafts, mostly bombers like this one, that were downed in the area, and that is because of the fact that there was an important Allied airbase there. The wreck was found resting on the seabed about 40 meters down, and there were bones discovered inside, which are said to belong to the pilot and co pilot of the aircraft. They were able to find them by sifting through the sediment underneath the cabin, and their remains were then placed into bags in order to be lifted out of the water and brought to the ship for further analysis. This is most certainly quite a grim discovery, but it allows those who lost their lives to be returned home, and it allows the relatives some sort of closure with their tragic losses. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Backyard Discovery. When I read this story, I was definitely concerned, but it also made me laugh so much. Many of us can understand that uncomfortable feeling of having an issue, but not wanting to bother anyone else about it until the time is right. Sometimes this is just instinct, sometimes this is just politeness, and sometimes you absolutely need to say screw politeness and bother someone because it's an emergency. Nearing the end of 2017, someone in East Poland was digging in their backyard when they accidentally unearthed an unexploded grenade that dates all the way back to World War II. Because it was around the holidays, he didn't want to disturb anyone who might be enjoying time and food with their families, so instead of calling the police, he put it in a bucket filled with sand and placed it in his shed until after the holidays were over. Once the proper people were informed, the area where he found the explosive was examined where more dangerous objects were also found. In the end, military personnel came by to take care of and properly and securely destroy these dangerous findings. In our number Fourth spot today, we have rocket propelled mortar shells. While crews were just doing their job casually clearing up the roadside ditches in northeast Poland, they made a shocking discovery. They uncovered what appeared to be two unexploded explosive devices. After experts were called in and further research was done, these two items turned out to be German 28 centimeter Nebel Warfer shells. Specialists were then able to come and secure the site and the weapons so that they could be taken away for a scheduled detonation, which occurred the following. Day. The weapons are rocket propelled mortar shells that were used with a weapon that would fire them in groups of six, with their maximum range being around 2,200 meters. In our number three spot today, we have a grave. In March of 2018, archaeologists in West Poland made a dark discovery when they found a grave that contained the remains of German soldiers that dates back to the Second World War. To make this discovery even more grim, the soldiers were all bound with a blue cord. According to experts, the remains are from 1945, and while while the cord looks extremely eerie, they explained that it was likely just used to transport them to the place of burial. 
According to archaeofeed.com, quote, along with the remains, researchers of the Pomost Association, who initially found archive documents that led to the discovery of the grave, discovered parts of military uniforms, buttons, and German soldier tags. The researchers did not find any marks that would indicate execution of the soldiers. One of the individuals had his legs broken in a few places. According to archaeologists, the soldiers died in battle, and then they would have later been transported to this spot. In our number two spot today, we have the crash site. During a two month long excavation that was done by a team of soldiers, sailors, and airmen, as well as civilians, they were able to recover and retrieve some human remains that might belong to the long lost American air crews of World War II airplanes. The team worked near an island which, during the war, was the site of a Japanese submarine base and a seaplane ramp. This area was the target of a ton of B 24 bombings and raids by the United States in 1944 and 1945. The team sifted through the sand in the area using large baskets in order to search for the remains. Now that they've located the remains, what happens next? Well, the remains will be analyzed to see if they match the profile of any of the missing service members that are associated with that crash site. If so, then their surviving next of kin will be notified. In our number one spot today, we have the Chuck Lagoon. This lagoon was the site of one of the main bases for Japan during the war, but in 1944, the United States launched an attack on it. During this, 60 ships were sunk, around 250 planes were brought down. It is likely that researchers knew about the significance of this area, but we didn't really get a good look at it for some 70 years. A photographer who goes by the name of Super Jolly went down into this less than jolly area to snap photos of everything that can be seen down there. He called this shoot one of the scariest dives he's ever done in his life, and I can completely understand why. The area is filled with human skulls, gas masks, and bullets, and many of the artifacts down here are extremely well preserved, which is great for research, but also just so haunting. This area most definitely serves as a haunting reminder of the realities of a world war.